Blade rooms are energy efficient, totally scalable, factory built data centers. The PUE of 1.15 is astonishing, and it is the lowest proven PUE we are aware of anywhere in the world today. The need to cut data center energy focused our design and led to the Blade Room system delivering an annualized PUE of 1.15 across the full load range. With increasing demand for IT worldwide and a global focus on sustainability, the Blade Room system offers a compelling solution for either new build data centers or to increase capacity in existing data centers. Our background is in the design and factory build of mission critical facilities serving both the healthcare and food service markets. Every hour over 40 patients are being cared for and operated on in one of the 150 modular operating theatres that we've produced and delivered around the world. Our experience of providing facilities such as these around the world is vast. The common theme with these projects is the careful management and control of air flows. With over 30,000 commercial kitchens designed and installed around the world, including the world's largest kitchens for the Olympic Games, we've built up enormous expertise in knowing how to remove heat from these environments. In the healthcare business, we've perfected the close control of air movement and room pressure management to ensure above all else that the patient is always protected. Combining the removal of heat with careful airflow design led to the Blade Room system. When designing the data center system, we weren't happy to look at the traditional cooling methods of having the IT servers being cooled inside the environment. It seemed like putting ovens inside a cold room. It's a very energy inefficient approach. We had some simple principles. We wanted to extract the maximum amount of heat from the IT. We wanted to use the mechanical cooling as little as possible and we wanted to maximize the amount of free air that we could cool the servers with. Right okay so here we are this is the uh, mixing chamber for the inlet to the air optimizer. Here we have air coming in from outside it's winter time we're only taking a little bit there's cold air coming in through here you can yep. feel that's very cold. I can. Uh, we're mixing it with warm air coming back from here to create the air at the right condition as it goes down through the air optimizer, uh, it'll be uh, humidified to get us the right temperature and humidity into the supply air corridor to the IT equipment. So what happens in summer then? Well in summertime it'd be hot outside, that would be closed completely, we'd have 100% fresh air coming in from here and it'd typically be sort of very hot. Um, as it goes down there again it's going to hit the, uh, the adiabatic cooler. Uh, which will cool and humidify, but primarily it's being used as a cooler and again to give the right design conditions in the cold air corridor. To get the best efficiency, we designed the entire ventilation system around the structure, very much along the same lines as how we design operating theatres. There are no raised floors or ventilation ductwork. The air is supplied via the main corridors to where it is needed, and the air optimizer provides the cooling required and matches exactly the IT load. A blade room located in the UK uses free cooling for more than 99% of the year. When developing the blade room we needed to prove the energy efficiency. To do this we designed and built a standalone climate emulator the climate emulator enabled us to exactly monitor the energy use and the PUE across an entire range of climatic conditions from minus 5 to plus 50 and throughout the entire humidity range. So we were able to provide an entire year of UK weather onto the blade room and prove its energy usage throughout that entire period 
And what that demonstrated was a proven PUE of between 1.03 and 1.06 under all load conditions. That was without the UPS connected to it. Uh, when you connect the UPS and the transformer, you take into account absolutely everything, including things like generator heaters. The PUE goes up to about 1.11. Well, the beauty of the blade room is because it so rarely uses mechanical cooling, its efficiency stays very high at all load conditions. We actually get a better efficiency at lots of part loads than we do at full load. Typically, we're at about 1.11 at 100% load and about 1.11 at 40% load. In between the two, we're actually better and we get below 1.1. Below 40%, the UPS losses start to increase, and down at about 15%, we get up as high as 1.25, and that's still a very good PUE. Hello, I'm Rebecca Morris, and I've come here to the Blade Room Centre to talk to Nick and Tom and find out all about what makes a Blade Room. Nick, Tom, tell me, what is a Blade Room? Well, a blade room is a pre-engineered factory-built modular data center. It's built here in the factory in the space of 12 weeks, in which time it's fully fitted out and fully commissioned and tested before then being taken apart and delivered to site, put back together again and retested just to make sure that all the cables are back in the right place and it's ready to go. By using a pre-engineered factory-built approach, delivering projects becomes far less complex reduces massively the risks involved and takes timescales down enormously. You mentioned plug and play installation. What does that mean then in context of the blade room? Uh, what, what that means is that we build it completely in the factory, so it's all completely installed, high quality installation, fully tested and commissioned in the factory. It's then disconnected in sections, it's transported to site, and then it is literally plugged back together again. You plug in an electrical power supply to it, you plug in a backup generator supply to it, and it's ready just to put rack servers straight into your racks. Although blade rooms are transportable anywhere in the world, they don't have the same constraints of a container-based system. There are container-based systems out there already. Is, is this a container-based system? Uh, no, it's not. It has all the benefits of a container-based system in that it's fully modular, it's complete plug-and-play, it's transportable anywhere in the world. But th this is a, a proper building, factory built, but built to normal building regs. It's got a 60-year structural design life uh, and, and it's, it's no way like a container. These are real data centres with spatial environments, wide corridors, tall ceilings and easy-to-access maintenance areas. There are no compromises. Due to the modular design, the Blade Room system can make data centers of any size, both single and multi-story. Well, a Blade Room data center can be any size you like, really. It starts as small as typically sort of a 30 rack solution, uh, and that can be extended up 30 racks at a time to pretty much any size you like. The Blade Room system is an efficient use of capital allowing you to match capacity with growth. We can add on extra data centre modules uh, which come with 30 racks of IT equipment in each one um, and that can be done live or you can add on another air optimizer uh, and increase the density or increase it to a tier 4 facility. Well, this is pretty impressive. It is. Well, we've got the, the entire site load in 10 cabinets here. So there's nearly 240 kilowatts at 24 kilowatts per rack operating here. As you can feel, the temperature here is nice and cool. It's exactly what the servers want and the system's operating perfectly at those high densities. So how does the Blade Room deal with the crucial issue of resilience? How do you ensure that there's no downtime, that it's operational 24-7? Well, the Blade Room can be designed to any level of resilience that you like, really. Um, anything from, you, you know, a, a cost-effective Tier 1 solution all the way through to a Tier 4 solution. The, um, the unit that's currently being constructed in the factory has been designed to a Tier 3, so it's fully concurrently maintainable. Uh, and it's, it's quite easy, even whilst live, if you were to have that as a data centre you could convert that to a tier four solution whilst it's live by adding a second air optimizer and a second power management room and go to full fault tolerance. And you've got two power sources here, why, why two? Um, 
It's a requirement from a resilience point of view. We, you mentioned this is a tier three data center, which means we must have an A power supply and a B power supply to all of the equipment. So we'd have an A and a B UPS outside, and the A feed would be coming in here, the B feed would be coming in here to these two switchboards, and they're completely separate. These switchboards, then the outgoing feed here goes to this buzz bar, which goes down and serves uh, all of the IT equipment with an A supply, and then same on this panel here, this switch goes out through this bus bar and feeds all of the IT equipment on a B supply. Over here we have the DX cooling system, so this is the emergency backup mechanical cooling system. Do you use all of these to cool the IT system? Well all six do operate together, but it's designed on an N plus one basis, so if one of them fails, five of them are quite capable of doing all of the cooling needs at the data centre. Okay, so we're now in the fan and the adiabatic cooling section of the air optimizer. This is the adiabatic cooling. It's on and calling for some cooling at the moment. You can see slightly different colours here. For example, if you feel here where it's dry, the air's quite warm. Yeah. Whereas this one is quite wet and doing cooling, you can feel how much yeah. cooler it is there. It is. And there are just different stages of cooling, and the damper up here just ensures that we get a tight control both on temperature and humidity. There are 12 fans here. They all operate together, but it's designed to do its design capacity uh, with 10 fans running. Maintenance on all plant and electrical systems is possible when fully operational due to the tier three design. Uh, these are very simple to maintain. In the event of ever needing to replace one of these, you simply undo these three plugs here, these four bolts, and it lifts out. You take it out, put another one in its place, and it's all up and running. And you do all of that while it's live at full capacity. Okay, in here we have the filtration system. So we've got panel filters here. So, for example, these are very simple just to take out and change. Every now and again, these will need replacing. You just take that out replace it and again there's a high level filter here's a bag filter to f8 filtration levels which gives us uh, well, eliminates the dust and contamination getting into the it area so really simple to maintain then yes it's all been designed to be as easy as possible to maintain there's plenty of space in here uh, we've got uh, full lighting throughout the whole area all the lighting is emergency lighting as well throughout the whole air optimizer uh, and all the components are standard components off the shelf so ideal for simple maintenance. The remote monitoring system allows you to see live information on how your data center is running from anywhere in the world. There are live video and audio feeds letting you both see and hear exactly what's going on in your data center. In this way you can really stay on top of things. Well, Bladerim incorporates a monitoring system. Uh, we have a separate BMS as well which reports into the monitoring system. And this monitoring system allows you to view how much energy you're consuming, how much water you've used, uh, and any of the critical sensors within, within the building to tell you temperature, etc. And that can, be re that can be viewed either within the building itself or it can be viewed from a central location on a site with multiple blade rooms or it can even be viewed anywhere in the world over IP. Bladeroom is a fast, efficient, future-proof system and offers you a serious choice for your next data center project.